Hello, and welcome to Two Girls in a Pod. I'm Sharon. I'm Christy. Hope all of you are doing well today. You know, once again, you know, how we come up with these ideas for our podcast is we just kind of talk about things, talk about things that are either we're working on in, I'm working on in therapy with people, or working on in our personal life, or yeah, talking to friends. Starting up a conversation, and then we realize, hey, that's a good topic. <laughs> So today we want to talk about talents and about gifts and about all of those things and, and about em- embracing those. You know, one of the things is, or one of the things I, I feel like is to get to your place of accomplishments, you must embrace your strengths and talents. And I think so much of the time we, maybe we don't know our talent or maybe we feel we're talented, but we'll say oh, God, that's stupid, or nobody's going to like that, or I'm not really that good. You know, y'all know what I'm talking about because everybody does it. Well, I think a lot of times, too, sometimes it's things that we don't even realize because it's just something that we do, and we're kind of on autopilot and we, when we do them. But there are other people that can be from the outside and look and see that, you know, maybe you're really, really good at something. And, you know, it's sort of like you talked to me when we started the business, and, you know, I had to learn all this stuff with insurance and stuff like that and, and doing credentialing for you to get set up to where that you were on the insurance panels and all of that kind of stuff. I had to figure out how to do all of that. And word started getting around that I was doing that. So then there were others that came to me that asked me to help them get it done, too. So, I mean... Sometimes you're just doing something, maybe out of necessity or whatever, and you you get some practice at it and you get better at it. And then people, but other people are seeing it and they'll come to you and say, hey, can you help me out with this? That's really, you know, a talent or a gift when you look at it in that way. Well, and I think too, is sometimes we don't look how things tie together. Right. Because your degree is in history. Yeah. And that. Which in, included a lot of research and which is basically what I had to do to get all of this done. And it's pretty much, you know, when we look at our business and, you know, I'm, I'm, we're very fortunate and we're and very blessed because we do have a very successful uh, private practice. But it was a lot of research, everything from what medical, electronic medical records do I use to what system do I use to what telehealth do I use to where we have our office location. You know, you do a lot of that research, which is something that you're really good at. But you didn't realize how can, because you always say, oh, God, I got a history degree. What is, you know, what kind of. <laughs> what do you do with that? You know, and a lot of people would ask me, when, when you finish school, what are you going to do? You know, and I would joke and I'd say, I'm going to be a, a curator at a museum in France. <laughs> 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 Make a joke out of it, I guess. I don't know. Not that I couldn't have been, I suppose. But, but you don't realize when you're applying it to the real world and you're just doing this stuff because you feel like you're doing it out of necessity how it can really actually turn into something more. And I feel like that it's really helped us in the success of our business. So I'm grateful for it. And I think that's what it is too. You know, I think that not realizing once again, how one thing ties into the other thing and and how we sometimes will minimize something and not realize the value of it. Yeah. You know, so I think, you know, that's really important. But I think, you know, when we talk about embracing our talents and our strengths, you know, sometimes if you have a strength, and once again, if it's something that other people might not view as a strength, maybe you're a talker and people are there like, oh God, that's a person always talking or whatever. And then realizing, you know what, maybe I could do stand up comedy or maybe I can do this or maybe I, you know, there's just so many things now that you can do. And I think that's really the great thing about social media and all those things is because now there's so many platforms for people. We'll get stuck on this sometimes, me more so than Christy. I will go down a rabbit hole on watching different kinds of talent, whether it's art or dance or putting this together or putting that together. I watch them build their little houses in the jungles. (laughs) I mean, and I get mesmerized by the talent. And I always say to myself, I am so grateful that we have a platform now where this I get to experience this. Yeah, so many people are able to put their stuff out there now to where that everyone can see. And it's really cool that we get to witness those talents that they have. And I think that's a really good place for a lot of people to start. And it can be intimidating. You know, I'm sort of preaching to the choir myself, you know, (laughs) because I've talked about doing stuff like that. And it's a matter of taking that step, facing those fears and doing that 
to be able to embrace it. I'm sure that it'll be really rewarding once I get to that point. But that's, I think that it's really cool that there is that opportunity for people. And I think too, you know, when we talk about that, it's so hard, I think sometimes for people to embrace their talents and, and to truly acknowledge their strengths, because I think oftentimes along the path of that, there are those people who on purpose or unintentionally, whatever, intentional, unintentional, who will sabotage that person for whatever reason. And maybe, once again, maybe it's intentional, sometimes it's unintentional, but once again, we've always talked constantly about listening to those other voices in our head about our worth and stuff. And I think being able to do that, and you know, it's, I talk with my clients, find what you love to do. And whether you're doing it as a career or you are just doing it because it fills you up, do it. One of my clients, I've really been pushing this with her because she's all about work and and very much in, involved with her family and stuff that it gets overwhelming and then we lose sight of who we are. And, I, and her assignment was, you need to find something that you love to do, something that you love to do that fills you up, gives you something. And I was pleasantly surprised that she did her assignment, which I always appreciate what my clients do. And I go, well, you know, you had an assignment. She goes, I did it. And she was all happy. And I go, well, what was it? She goes, I went roller skating. I go, What? She goes, she's done it. She did the roller derby. I thought this was so cool. I I thought, oh, wow, this is amazing. Exactly. And I think that sometimes people have a hard time. They'll sit there and think, well, what is it that I love to do or whatever? I know that one thing that helped me is to think back when I was a kid, when I wasn't encumbered by everything that we do in life and, you know, when people as they get older, start trying to carry the weight of the world on their shoulders and things like that. But when you think back to when you were a kid and you didn't have all these other responsibilities, what did you love doing? And I think I read that in in something at one point and I remember thinking, yeah, that's a great place to start to actually figure that out because it's like after time or something, I guess you kind of forget the fun that you had doing some of those things. And like for that lady, for me, I loved roller skating. So that, I think it's cool that there, there's a lot of people that's gone back to roller skating during the whole COVID thing. So that was really cool to me. Well, and I think even for you, because there was a little bit of, even with that, a little bit of, oh, should I do it? You know, you had a little bit of doubts. Can I do it? All of those things. And uh, so I want you to know, as we're sitting here, I'm looking at her really cool skates. She has, you know, we said, if we're going to do this, get let's get you some skates. So she has some really cool skates. Yeah. And I've been practicing on them and that's what it is. It, you know, you just have to take that step and then you realize it's worth it because even though I'm having to practice and relearn and all of that, it's okay because I am really enjoying it. And, you know, challenging yourself. I uh, think of our friend, Kathy G, you know, we talk about her a lot, but it's really funny because, you know, her in biking and, and she would come into the office and I would look and there'd be a bruise. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Next time there'd be another bruise. She kept falling down and she kept getting up. She kept falling down and she kept getting up. And that's what it's about today. That's what she does. It starts the season for biking is starting She's getting her bike ready and she will be back out there and she will be doing it. And she challenges herself to go further and further and become better and better. And that's what we're talking about. Because sometimes we don't even know that. You know, we'll be doing it anyway. She was already biking, but now she's doing uh, harder things. And I think we can really see how putting forth the effort and following through And how good you can become at something when you don't realize it at the beginning. Right. Because everything is, it's practice and the time that you devote to it. And I think that a lot of times people won't even start something like that because they're afraid of the failure. But nothing is a failure if you put forth the effort. all practice. Yes, (laughs) it's all practice. And I think that it's important to remember that because you can still have a lot of fun even doing the practice piece. For me, I am very fortunate. I I really do believe that, you know, because I really do love what I do. I love being a therapist. It, you know, I don't know, it's it's just something. But you know what I found early on for me is I would meet people and people just start telling me all of their stuff. You know, one day I said, you know what? I think I'll just go to school for this, (laughs) you know? And 
do what I love. I really do love being a part of these journeys. I love that people invite me on these journeys. You know, sometimes kicking and screaming, but you know, that's a whole other story. Mm -hmm. By the end of it, we get a lot. No, it turns out well. But that's the thing. I got to do what I love. When I went to college, I wasn't one of these people. I went in, I knew exactly what I was going to do. Didn't change my major. Everything stayed the same. I knew what I wanted to do because I knew I had found something that I feel I'm pretty good at. Part of the reason I am is because it's that thing of doing what you love. And when you do what you love, you become authentic. And I think that's what it is. I tell my clients, what you see is what you get. I don't, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. And I think that becomes, and because it is such a part of who you are, because it is truly that authentic piece of me, I get to love what I do every day. Yeah, well, and it's coming from a very genuine, real place. And when you're doing that, I feel like you're putting in your best effort. And you find that when you do that, the way it plays out, I feel like, is that it's not just your success, but how much it helps that other person because you're really doing what resonates with you. And I think what you also have to do in these situations is, is get that circle of people who really are there for you, see that, encourage it, embrace it, and are as excited for you as you are. And we have friends like that. You know, Sandra, she is one of those friends for us. Everything we do, she is so excited. She's our cheerleader. I truly love that about that friendship with her. But we have it with others, whether it's Kathy or Tammy or Kathy and Sylvia and Heather, Colleen, and the list goes on and on. It really does. And I think that's true because when you have that support, it just encourages you to do more. And I think that there are many, many interests out there and you will find those other people that have that common interest with you. And if you find your tribe, then you're going to be even more successful. Or wolf pack. We can call it wolf yeah, pack. Too. Yeah. <laughs> find your wolf pack. But, you know, even if it's four. No. <laughs> I think that's the thing is that Having the talent, and sometimes when we don't see it, having other people point it out for us. You know, I think that was even with the thing when you said about skating is, you know, you were there like, well, we could go to the skate things. And I thought the way that it's going to become more valuable, or I felt was have the skates, have those skates that are yours that you take ownership of. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then you have them in your home and you can put them on. And she does. And she skates around the house. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Gotta start somewhere. <laughs> and, uh, but yes, exactly. It's trying to help that path to whatever that thing is, help it to be smoother. Mm -hmm. You helping me do my credentialing, that made my path smoother so I could do what I love to do. I could not do that if you did not do that piece to help me. So it's all of these pieces of everything and how different people have a part in that puzzle for you. Mm hmm. And you be that to somebody else too. Mm -hmm. If somebody does that for you, pay that forward. Do that with them and encourage. If you have friends who are doing stuff they love and are passionate about and stuff like that, do it. One of my friends, Suzanne Reed Fine, she is an amazing, amazing artist. And what I really love is that she puts her stuff out there. And, you know, I love her Friday morning drawings. And it's like it's starting a new thing. Because she does watercolor and now she's starting uh, people and that. But she puts it out there and she's practicing. And I love that there's those people who sit there. And I love that I get to sit there and I will tell her if I, oh, I love this or, you know, whatever. And I see that feedback. That's helping her. It's going into another place. Do that. She's successful as a watercolor artist, but now she's doing something else. Embrace all those things. Help those things. Well, and I think, yeah, that's true. And and maybe even if you're not at that level of artistry or whatever, putting out the thing to just say, this is what I'm interested in and this is what I like, you find those connections. And it's really interesting. Like you've had some people that you've worked with that are interested in the gaming piece and have been able to connect with others and expand on that and do things with it that they didn't even think they would be able to do. So, I mean... I think that's another reason that sometimes people don't follow their dreams or their interest in that way because they feel like it's not going to be 
sometimes it's just a hobby, but sometimes it can lead into so much more. And I think there's a lot of influences over life that will tell you, well, you can't ever make anything off of that or you can't do anything with that. And we believe those things. So we don't showcase those talents and put it forward. And how much of that is in the arts? Yeah. How many times do, even when I have clients and I'll say to the kid, well, what do you love to do? What would you want? I want to be an artist or I want to be a game designer or I want to be this or, and how many times I'll hear, well, well, it's okay. You do art on the side, but, or sing or dance or you do that on the side, but you know, you go get a real job. And how many people put those on the side and never go back to them? Right. And if you see that in a child, oh my goodness, if you have the opportunity to nurture that and encourage them in that way, it's like my niece, Ella, she just is an amazing artist, I think. And I think the possibilities that she may have through that, she enjoys drawing and I can see it in her work. I have one of my clients, I have always loved working with him, but he's really getting into his art. And he, the way he can conceptualize things, he puts things together. He's one of my clients that's on the autism spectrum. And I really look forward weekly because he's always really excited to show me his work. And I am just as excited to see it. And I will tell him. And the more we talk about it, the more his confidence is growing. And he's taking art classes too. So that's really helped. But, and I I loved it this week. He's talking about next year, I can take other art classes. And he's excited about it. And I love that. And I love his family system, encourages it. All three of those children, the two sisters and him, are extremely artistic. They do amazing, beautiful work. But what I love about the parents is they encourage that. They encourage it. The one, she streams, she did TikTok. She is, she has that kind of personality and that people are drawn to, even if they don't agree with it, whatever, they still encourage it. That is that thing of fostering those things, whether it's in your area or your whatever, arena, whatever, they encourage that. And I I absolutely love that about this family. I always tell them they need to be my poster family because of those things. And I know you've, I've actually gotten to see some of his artwork and I I see that talent and I just think, you know, you never know where that will lead. That could be a great job for him if he wants to go into graphics or things like that. I mean, that's amazing. And there is that talent should be encouraged, I feel like. And that's what I mean. So anytime, take the time to really sit with yourself. And, you know, one of the questions that we answered last week of the thing of retirement. And, you know, the thing is, is when you retire and I have a few people who uh, have retired and some that are getting ready to retire. There is the stress or the thing of, oh my God, what am I going to do now? I've done, this is who I've been. This has been my identity. And I always say, this is the exciting time of life. And the reason that it is exciting is because you get to really sit, take time, sit down, write it out. What are some of the things that I love? What are some of the things that I've thought about, but have been too afraid to try or Whatever that is, write it out. Pick one or two off that list and go for it. Do it. See if you like it. Mm -hmm. And maybe it doesn't end up being about something being profitable, but there are, it's not always about that because I really feel like that it helps us on a mental health level. Absolutely. And I think that's the biggest thing. When you're doing something you love, you're going to feel it. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel it. And it's going to give something to you. And I, watching my client talk about roller skating, I could see it and I could feel it on her. That's not about something profitable, but it is. That's the greatest profit we have in our lives is not our financial profit, but is the profit of our mind. And it is the profit of our overall well-being. Yeah. That is so profitable for us. Because without that, I don't care how much money you have, but if you're not doing what you love, it feels cumbersome. It feels burdensome. It feels all of those things. Mm -hmm. But when you can do a passion, it is so rewarding. It is so important for people to understand that. Find your passion, find your talent, find your strengths, utilize them. And you do utilize them for yourself. And I have a client and we were talking one day and I really liked what he told me. He goes, Sharon, if you do what you love, the money will follow. Yeah. 
if you do what you love, the money will follow. And I sat with that and I thought, oh my God, he is so right. Mm -hmm. Because it comes about sometimes in ways that you don't even consider. So it's, you get involved in something you're passionate about and then boom, you know, something happens and it can be profitable. You never know. Even like with our podcast, one of the things we do, one of the things we wanted to do something together and we wanted to do something that was still tied into the stuff that I do in my business, or I should say in our business, um, we don't talk about billing care, but that's your side. <laughs> Thank goodness it's boring. But anyway, <laughs> but the thing is, is that we wanted to do something. And part of it is we wanted to give back. You know, once again, we always talk about the importance of giving back. And and this is kind of our way of giving back. And, you know, when we first started this, we it took us a while because we would hem-ha what we would talk about. I mean, you know, we had a lot of back and forth on it. and Well, and then we the had to anxiety. deal with my stage fright. And <laughs> even though I'm not on a stage, it's still, it was very intimidating. Yes. And, you know, one of the things is, is it was intimidating for me, too. Yeah, it really was because it's outside my comfort zone, so to speak. You know, when I talk to people one on one, you know, I went to school for a long time, have those skills. And I think it's just, you know, what you also love and, and what, you know, you kind of have a knack for. But this was kind of different. But it was something we thought, you know what, we felt there was going to be value to it. And what I love is, and we talked about this last week after our last one, feeling really much every week. It's like we feel better about it. If they're, yeah, they're beca- we up the level of comfort, I feel like, as we've gone along. And I think that that's the thing. A lot of people, too, they think that everything has to be worked out meticulously and perfect before they begin something. And we even tried that at the beginning. We really sat down and we were like, okay, let's have an outline and let's figure this all out <laughs> and, and really work the problem, so to speak. And it didn't flow that way. And now I feel like that we've come to such much better place. I mean, many times it's a conversation over coffee that, you know, like I said, we come up with these topics and we get into the conversation. Well, and because, you know, this is about life's journey and that's what it is. It's things start with conversation and then it moves on from there. You know what I mean? You're right. You know, we tried to do the outline thing, but one of the things we, we talked the most about is we wanted this to be more organic. We wanted it to be where we, it's real. When you hear us talk, this is what we do. This is how we talk to each other. Well, you know, every once in a while, Christy gets mouthy and, you know, no. (laughs) It's hard to believe, huh? (laughs) No, so, but that's what it is. We're fortunate because I feel like we really do encourage each other with the things that we do. And, you know, I love your voice and I'm always encouraging that. And even with that, with Bimosa and not only supporting him by going to his concerts when he has them. But when he opened the studio, you know, we wanted to be a part of that. And it was a thing that it was so perfect because who knew him opening his studio, how that would help you. So it's it's this uh, cooperative thing that goes on, you know, where two people are helping each other out. And exactly. I feel like, you know, because I did go in and work with them in the studio and that was really good for me to have some feedback for myself. And I feel like that it was a really good thing to do, you know, even though it wasn't about distribution or anything like that, it was just about doing it for myself and hopefully raising the comfort level, which I'm still working on. But, you know, cause I, I've said about posting things online and stuff like that. And I really haven't done that. And I do want to take that next step to do that. Well, and I think once again, it's that thing of everything becomes, you know, on our comfort, you know, it's, it's practice and it's, and when we step outside that comfort zone, it can be terrifying and understanding that you can always go back to where you were (laughs) there. It's not anything that's written in stone or anything like that. And I think that becomes the thing too, is that we get so caught up in the fact that we think that, oh my God, if I do this then, you know, what if it doesn't work? Or what if I don't like it? Oh my gosh, then start over, do something else. And that's where I say too, I feel like a lot of times people get so hung up on the details of thinking I got to make it perfect. It's got to be this or that or the other before they can actually follow through with something. But sometimes it's not, it doesn't have to be all planned out perfectly. It's just taking that first step to do something. And then once you do, I think you see the magic happen. Absolutely. And I think that's the thing, too, is that when you can 
take that moment to embrace your talents and get to that place, it becomes almost magical because it builds your confidence in a way it takes you to that next level of you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that's the thing, going to that next level of you. Exactly. And that's where I feel like that you're finding that authentic self. And when you are that, you can bring it in a whole new way. So I feel like that that's why it's important. It's like we were saying, you know, maybe it's not about monetary value of something, but it is about what it brings to you by doing that. And I think that once you start doing stuff like that, really looking at those interests and really getting involved and embracing those talents and those gifts, it spills over into other aspects of your life. I feel like that it it becomes, because you are that authentic self, you're able to shine in so many other ways. You know, that becomes that intrinsic part, that part of us, that what it does for us. But we forget what it does for other people too. And that's kind of that, you know, you embrace the talent and those strengths. First and foremost, I think for what it does for you on a personal level, how it helps you to grow and to feel the confidence and everything that comes with that. But when you do that, there is a feeling too, when you see how somebody else receives it, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And you realize, oh my gosh, other people, this really does matter to other people or whatever that is, whatever that intrinsic thing, you know, you have the intrinsic and then you have that other person who can appreciate that. I think that is that next building block. And so it's this thing of embracing your own talents. And then after you are able to do that, then how do you go much even beyond that? You know, like we talk about paying it forward. If somebody else is doing something, how do you encourage them to, to be the best that they can? And I always say with kids, kids are so important. It doesn't matter what they do. Our little goddaughter, I don't care. She's doing her little art now all over the place. But mm-hmm. it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Encourage it. If they start throwing a ball or whatever it is, encourage it. I have a a parent I see and she brings in her little girl and they are so crafty. Oh my goodness. Crafty, crafty, crafty. And so two weeks in a row they brought in, she made a little house out of like a Kleenex box or something. Mm -hmm. The top was a Kleenex, I don't know. Anyway, you pick it up and she has her little toys in there and stuff. And so we play and Every week she brings us something she draws. This week it was uh, Bumpy. Really great job too, I want you to know. She brought in a little character, a little toy of Bumpy, and she did this. And she had a drawing and she does a cutout of them and everything, so yeah. And the week before it was cats. Mm -hmm. It it was kittens, we got cats. (laughs) But her talent is amazing. And what I love is her mom encourages it. While her mom is very crafty too. You had another one that was that way too, that brought in the bowl for you. She could conceptualize that from what you've told her. When you come to my office, my wall is painted and it looks almost like the ocean. And then I have pictures on it. And, you know, I talk to my clients, they know I love to travel and I love that me and Miss Christie love the beach and stuff. So she's seven years old. She brings in this bowl and in it, it, she puts this white, so it looks like sand, two little chairs an umbrella, a palm trees. Mm-hmm. And it's like a whole miniature beach setting for us in this glass bowl with the sand and a little bit of water. And just, yeah, it was amazing. I'm always blown away by the talent of the people that I work with. Amazed, amazed. I've had some of the most amazing artists come through my office, creative in so many ways. And another one that that's um, the same child, she would do the uh, painted rocks. And leave those different places. And, you know, even that is something small. I remember when we bought this house, somebody had done that and painted some and put them on the side of the house over here. And you know what? It just made me smile. Mm-hmm. If Even if that is your thing, painting rocks and leaving them places, it'll make somebody smile. That same little girl we're talking about, talk about a little entrepreneur. She would make little soaps and put little, like the superheroes or whatever in them. She'd go to the little markets here Mm -hmm. and sell them. That kid could make up to $300. And they're like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Right? Yeah, this is what I'm saying. But her mom encouraged her. And that's what it is. When we encourage those talents, 
when we nurture them, they get to grow. And when you get to be a part of that journey, it is amazing. I am forever telling my clients when they're telling me about projects, some projects I'm telling you right now, I don't even understand because, you know, it's way outside it. They're getting all into some intricate stuff, <laughs> but I'm, they're like, oh my God, that is so amazing because it's the joy that I see on their face. And in my head, I'm thinking, hmm, don't understand it, but it sounds really cool. <laughs> yeah, but they enjoy it and you never know what it's going to develop into. I mean, you have another one that you see that is always a building robots. And I'm telling Sharon, I really think oh that that kid, he's going to grow up and he's probably going to build real robots. <laughs> he's four, getting ready to turn five. But I am telling you, he, she's right. The robots that he could build. And he would tell me, Miss Sharon, build me something. And so here I am, you know, we build Legos and do stuff like that. But his talent is amazing. And, you know, when I talk to his mom, I'm always there like, and she's in right away. He's building robots. The other <laughs> brother's reading. <laughs> Two opposite ends of the spectrum there, man. Yeah. He wants to build. His happy place is building robots. But he conceptualizes architecture, engineer, something. That kid can conceptualize things in that fashion. And they encourage that. The one that reads, they encourage that. And that's what it's about. I have another client who his is, in fact, he's getting ready to start his own business, which I'm really excited about. He does games. He he makes games. But he is so unbelievably talented. It's like he wanted to learn to play the piano. YouTube it, taught himself that. He wanted to play the violin, started the violin, and then eventually took uh, lessons. But then his wrist messed up, so he couldn't. he can't do the violin now. But he does game design. And he does it because he really loves, he also writes. He's just multifaceted, I'm telling you. But he really loves this piece of it. And in, in, in the last uh, two or three sessions, we've been talking about that. He's got his business name. He's looking at, he's taking that plunge. Is there a little bit of fear and anxiety around it? Absolutely. But his passion is now becoming where he's going into business. And my other one, hers is accounting. Go figure. <laughs> but she loves it. Talk about accounting. She lights up. Thank goodness there's somebody that's passionate about that. Yeah, because I don't get it. But hey, I don't judge. No. <laughs> but even like with her, she's getting ready to start her own. She, that's her goal is to work on starting her own business around what she really loves, which is accounting, which is taxes. She loves taxes. Mm. She loves doing taxes. I said taxes and everybody cringed and thought, oh, thank God the season's over. <laughs> Because <laughs> we all know what that feels like. <laughs> right. So, and I encourage them. I'm there like, oh my God, let's look at that business plan. Let's look at how are we going to set those goals? What are some of the steps we take? I get actively involved in it because it encourages them to go after those things. She's talented in it. He's talented in the gaming. My kids are talented in the arts and the crafts and stuff, whatever that is. And as adults, I like when you said that when you go back to your childhood, what did you love to do? what was important for you to do. Yeah, I think sometimes that's a good pointer to give you ideas about things to try out. And go back, look at it. And even if it, you sit there and think, oh my God, that's foolish, I'm an adult. No, we forget to, oh my God. When I, you know, as a play therapist, it was often difficult to teach my parents how to play. We forget that, seems like. And if you're going to be a play therapist, you got to have patience. I'm going to tell you right now, I cannot tell you how many castles I would build and I would get ready to put the last piece on and they will come and kick it down. <laughs> and I just build it up. They, they kick it down. Three now pieces left or whatever. And the parents are over there all agitated. How? Just tell them to stop it. And they're like, why? Well, you don't even get finished. Don't care. It's their play, not mine. They tell me what to do and I do it. It's their play. And... You can never win a game with them because they always change the rules. And then the parents are all, you can't change the rules. The rules. Yes, they can. <laughs> it's play. It's make-believe. It's all made up So them. we have to remember to go to that place of our make-believe. Yeah. We have to go to that place of our imagination, to that place of wonderment, that place of being a kid. And because that's where we embrace, I think, the most. Mm -hmm. And think about yourselves as adults right now. Think about those moments that you've had recently where you'll think, oh, my God, that was so silly, but I laughed so hard. Sometimes we can laugh the hardest at the stupidest things we do. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, we will laugh and laugh. 
And then you'll tell me, stop making me laugh. <laughs> like, I'm not doing anything. But those moments where we, we let go and we truly be in the moment and where we feel our best. And that's what I think overall we're saying is take time to pay attention to the things that you love to do, the places that you're talented with, and do them first and foremost for you. If something else comes about, if something else happens where you can make money off of it, good for you. But if the greatest thing you get is that it makes you happy in that moment, then you are truly blessed and you are truly wealthy. Yes, it's that intrinsic value that is the most important piece of it, I think. I agree. Get out. Do those things, you know, whatever it is. And and share that with others, though. And if you have a talent or if you have something and you're not really sure, bounce it off of somebody you trust. Yeah. Let them know what it is. Bounce it off them and trust in them that they'll be kind to you and say, Oh my God, I saw that in you. And I think that that's a really important piece too, is go to that person that you trust to do that, to encourage you. Because sometimes when you're wanting to try out something new or that, you're already apprehensive. And I think if you go and you tell everybody about it, there are a lot of opinions out there and they may shoot you down for some idea. So I think it's really important to you know, when you're really just looking into something like that, share it with that person that you trust first and go with that. I agree. And, you know, one of the things is, is sometimes, you know, it does, when you're fortunate enough to have a family that's supportive of you, that's another great thing. You know, I'm, I am fortunate. A lot of my family is very supportive of me and supportive of our business and stuff like that. And I think my parents were very proud of that. Really happy I got to do this, you know, prior to them passing away. But that feeling of that encouragement and that that thing of sometimes when it's those people and, and they see that in you and you think, oh, my gosh, yeah, they see it in me. That's how I know I've made it or whatever that is, you know, because that's important as well. And if you're in your families, if somebody has a talent, encourage it, remind them. And, it, and if so, if they have a talent that you know that you've seen that they haven't seen, maybe point it out to them. Mm hmm. I don't know if you ever noticed this, but you do this really well. Encourage them. And sometimes our talents are lost because of listening to the words of others. And and if you know that, and if you see that, sometimes we have to change the words and we have to give those encouraging words. We have to remind people about what is valuable, you know, or what, or not valuable, but what talents you see or you think they're good at. Because sometimes, you know, we don't, I think we all have that time where we will have that thing of, oh, I don't feel like I can do this really well. And sometimes you just, you really don't know. You are tentative about trying something out, but maybe, maybe you do something and somebody else sees it. And if they never say anything to you about it, you don't know if to have faith in what you did was really good or not. So, I mean, I know that when we were first doing the private practice and that we were having to furnish an office and do all of those things. And I was really grateful when I got feedback that, you know, people said, you do really good with this interior design thing and all of that. And I even ask for my help with even setting up their offices sometimes in, in just the, the decor and things like that. And that was really cool to me because it's not something, you know, I planned on having a career in, but I sure enjoy doing it. And sometimes you have talents in areas that you don't even really realize. And if it's not your forte, don't do it. Right. I guess somebody does. Yeah. We did an accent wall. Sylvia wanted an accent wall, but she didn't want to paint it. I don't care. Sure, we'll go in and paint it. We'll go in and paint it. You don't it. care. Yeah. And sometimes you do have to ask for help from people that have those talents. And it's really good when you can identify that and they can help you out too. It's sort of like when we started this podcast as well. We knew that the editing piece of it was going to be a challenge. So shout out to our editor. <laughs> Oh, God, yes. <laughs> we really appreciate what he does in helping us send this out. So, yeah. So, absolutely. He makes us sound good. Raymond. And Joseph, yep. You we, make us sound good. We uh, appreciate it. We appreciate it. it. We couldn't do it. So, we needed somebody who could do it for us. And we so, so appreciate that. Sometimes you can have a talent, but you have to know <laughs> where that talent ends. Right. 
and where it gets into, you know, just crazy making stuff. So once again, we can have a talent, but our talent can go so far, but we, we need those other people to help bring it all together. And you're right. When we ask people, one of the things is, is uh, what I love about Sylvia, real quick, on, this is on Sylvia. What I love about Sylvia too, is she does the doTERRA and things like that. So I love that if I really have something like that, I can go to her and say, oh my gosh, I'm stressed for this. And she can mix me up a little concoction. And yeah, it's, I, it's wonderful. If you're dealing with a headache, you know, she knows what oils to help and all of that. So yeah. And I love that she has that. That is her thing. You know, she does some of the holistic stuff. I love it. I'm going to go to those people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think you'll find that we're so fortunate because in our group, each of the ladies that were part of the group, are so talented in different ways. If I want to know anything about the military and resources as far as the military goes, Kathy Weber is, I mean, unbelievably amazing at this. Very, very you know knowledgeable. I mean? Kathy G, if there's testing being done and I need somebody who I know who can sit there and read that testing and come back with me, I'll, that is her. Heather Campbell, Heather and I, we can bounce ideas off of each other and we are really able to work really well together. And she has such a, this kind of laid back feel to her. It's just such a different feel, but I get such a different feedback from her. And part of it's because we've been friends for so long as well. So I think that that's another thing that's really, really important. One of the other things is, is one of the things you'll often hear, and I've heard this several times in the last few weeks, is imposter syndrome. People will think it's imposter syndrome but the thing is, is sometimes that is us doubting our own talent based on somebody else's opinion. So it's, what is imposter syndrome? It's when you are pretending to be something or you're not as good as you say, or it can be all of those things. So they feel like they're an imposter by trying to do some of these things. Yes. Not realizing that it's not imposter, imposter syndrome. What it is, is it's practice till we get to be the place where we're supposed to be. It's also sometimes minimizing our talents and abilities based on maybe what somebody else is saying or somebody else is doing or what we're doing in comparison to. Right. Because that, I think, takes away our talent. One of my clients used it, and it's not that he is very talented at what he does. And I said, you're going into an area, there might be variations, I said, but your talent is there. It's just a variation. So it's not being an imposter. It's you have to learn a new system. But learning the system isn't what you're an imposter about. The thing that that's just practice to learn the system, I says, but the skill set you have. And I think that's what people forget when you have the skill set. You know, it's like if I have the skill set, but I'm going to a new medical records or whatever. I'm not an imposter in that. I don't know. That's practice. But when it comes to your talents and stuff, you are not being an imposter. Sometimes you're listening to others or you're comparing or you're doing other things. Be true to yourself. Truly be true to yourself. And I think the biggest thing is today is go remember what you loved as a child. Do some of that stuff. Sit down. Write the things you loved and things like that. And pick out two or three. Give it a whirl. See if it still is fun for you. And if you try something you don't like it, guess what? There are a gazillion things out there to do. Definitely. If you see talent in others, encourage it recognize it let them know no be a part of that even if it's that encouraging word or whatever it is go ask if you have a talent but it only goes so far you can only do so much with it go find those people surround yourself with people that you know can help you get to the place you want to be within that talent use resources always remember to pay it forward laugh enjoy yes Life is meant for living and for enjoying and experiencing. And And in the words of Mr. Megorium, your life is an occasion. Rise rise to to it. it. So once again, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that you guys all have a wonderful, fantastic week. And we hope that you tap into your childhood just a little bit. And we look forward to next week as always. And, you know, once again, questions, comments, or concerns, you can either go to our Facebook or to our... You can send an email, email. to podcast.twogirlsinapod at hotmail.com. 
Yeah, as always, we look forward to listening and hearing your feedback. And once again, thank you so much. We are so grateful for each and every one of you that listens to us. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.